What did you mean by many would come in your name and deceive many? Who were you speaking of? Well, I was aware at the time of all of the comings and goings in the spirit world. Uh, when you become at one with God, you can easily see spirits, you can communicate with them, you can easily see the intentions of people on earth and you can feel what they will do in the future as a result of those intentions. And because I could see all of these various factors, I realised that in the future, people, because of how the gathering momentum, if you like, of the Christian faith, as it was being taught at the time, that people would eventually, from the spirit, will come to people on earth claiming to be me in order to manipulate and deceive people on earth. And I understood that this would be a natural occurrence given the fact that God allows communication between the spirit world and the earth. Mm -hmm. Because God's laws allow this communication to occur, not only spirits who are of good condition can communicate, such as Moses and Elisha who communicated with me, and Elijah who communicated with me in the first century on the, on the, in, the, in the mount when we went with the transfiguration. But you also have spirits who are in a terrible condition being able to communicate with people on earth. And the kind of person uh, that a person on earth will attract, the kind of spirit that a person on earth will attract, will be a spirit who is in a very similar soul-based condition to the person on earth. And I noticed this occurring all the time. So a person who was a murderer on earth or inclined to murder on earth would often be surrounded by spirits who were trying to push the person into murdering again. Mm -hmm. A person who was a rapist on earth would be surrounded by a group of spirits trying to push the person into raping again. Or even raping for the first time. You know, the person might have the emotion inside of them that they are willing to rape and then a group of spirits surround them and try to push them into that action. We see a lot of evidence of this today where people, when they, when they appear in court, they say, I, I can't remember doing it. Or they say, oh, I had all these voices telling me to do it. You know, or, you know, they say all sorts of things. Yeah. And many of it, much of it is proof mm -hmm. that what I'm saying about these particular factors is true. Now, these particular people I knew in the future would want to deceive people by claiming to be me and then telling them other things that weren't true. And there's been literally in human history hundreds of thousands of these people who have done this, mm -hmm. who claim to be me, tell a whole heap of things that are false. And, uh, and I knew that would occur. And so I warned my disciples about deceivers coming and what they would try to do to deceive them. And that I warned them that the disciples would need to be in a good soul-based condition to attract higher spirits. Mm. You know, if they weren't, they were going to attract very dark spirits. And as it occurred, Peter, straight after my death, attracted some very dark spirits, enough dark spirits to rape you and, and harm the cause of truth on earth very markedly within the first few days mm. after my death. They were the kind of spirits that were surrounding many of my disciples mm. in the first century. And do you feel that that's happening again now on Earth? Of course, yeah. We, you know, we go along to a presentation, as you know. We, we often go along to presentations and uh, we give a seminar and the whole room is just filled with negative, dark spirits trying to influence a lot of the audience into disbelief, fear and all sorts of other emotions. You know, sometimes the, the, the audience is so heavy we've almost got to stop the whole proceeding because it, it, because there's so much influence and there's so much fear on the earth about the influence that causes the attraction. And we've seen in our audiences many times dark spirits influencing different people to ask certain questions, to be belligerent, to, you know, to, to make criticisms that they wouldn't normally make in public at least, mm -hmm. um, to even take actions they wouldn't normally take. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is a normal occurrence and the openness of their soul attracts these particular things to them. And the same applies with Christians, as much as it applies with Muslims, as much as it applies with atheists, as much as it applies with persons of any persuasion of any kind, politically, religiously and otherwise. There are literally groups of spirits surrounding every individual who come along to any seminar, manipulating and controlling their thoughts and their behaviour and their, even their ability to listen. We have some people ask a question at our audiences and immediately, as soon as I start answering the question, they go to sleep. Like, how does that happen? By the influence of spirits, just tuning them out, not wanting to hear the answer. Yeah. We've had people ask the same questions 20 times. 
why do you think they have to ask 20 times? Because they don't want the answer <laughs> I gave them first time. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, these are all parts of being spirit influenced. Now, this spirit influence causes people on earth to be deceived. It does. I agree. But we, I don't fear it because I can see it happening. You only will not, you will only fear it because you can't see it happening. Mm -hmm. And you only can't see it happening because you can't admit to yourself that it's happening or because you're not in a high enough condition of love to understand and feel it happening. Mm -hmm. And so my suggestion again, the answer is get into a better condition of love, get in a closer condition with God, you know, receive some of God's love, be filled up with that love. You'll be able to determine when you're being influenced then. Mm. Right? You won't need to be afraid about what I said about deceivers. Yeah. You'll go, yeah, there's a deceiver. There's a deceiver too. I'm not very afraid of him, but sure. I can recognize him. The reason why I gave uh, people information such as that was so that they could be helped to recognize people who do not have their best interests at heart. A person who does not love you does not have your best interests at heart. A person who is angry with you does not have your best interests at heart. They can say whatever they like. They can even say the truth, but they don't have your best interests at heart. It's very unwise to listen to a person who does not have your best interests at heart. And anger, resentment, control, manipulation, power-based things, lies, deceit, these are all proof of people who do not have your best interests at heart. Mm. They are the deceivers. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, darling. Yeah. Thanks, babe. <laughs>